Good day and welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, I will show you how to run a simulation in ANSYS of a robotic finger or robotic hand. I will show you the steps that I follow to get the simulation successfully running and converging. Now, why am I interested in running an FEA on a robotic finger? Well, it's because I want to know what the stresses are going to be like on the links, on the tendons, if it's a finger that is actuated with tendons, or on the gears and levers, if it's a finger that is actuated by a mechanism composed with gears and levers. And I also want to know what the stresses are going to be like on the pins that make the joints. Okay, let's start uh, from the very beginning, the model the geometry of the finger. For this tutorial I have prepared a simple model that is anatomically similar to a human finger. I have used Design Modeler for this purpose to create the geometry which is composed of five main components. I've got three components one, two and three joined by pins and I've got a fourth component which emulates the function of the metacarpal. And finally I've got a tendon, this long wire that is attached to the first link and goes all the way through the rest of the finger, just like you would see in a human hand. I have also created a symmetry plane that cuts the model in half with the aim of reducing the amount of nodes and therefore the amount of equations that ANSYS is going to solve later on. Now once I've got my geometry ready, I then proceed to import it into a static structural simulation. Once I'm into the environment of the simulation, I'm going to define the materials for every component. Now for the purpose of this exercise I have defined PLA for each link, then steel for the pins that join the links together, and finally I used polyester for the tendon. All you need to define a linear material in ANSYS are three things. The Young modulus, the density, and the Poisson ratio. Once the materials have been defined, I now need to create the contact elements, which are going to define the way the links interact with each other. In this case, I have created frictionless contact elements between each of the links and the tendon. Now, this step is very important because if the contact elements haven't been defined properly or realistically, then the simulation might fail to run at all. So it's very important to spend a fair bit of time in this step and carefully define the contacts between each component. The next step is to define the mesh. Now ANSYS is very good in defining the mesh automatically, but sometimes you need to redefine the mesh locally. In this case, I have made the mesh on the tendon a lot finer. The elements on the tendon are a lot smaller, and this is because the tendon is going to bend a lot, so I need that mesh on the tendon nice and flexible. Sometimes you have to create virtual topologies to simplify your geometry. In this example, I have found that the simulation was crashing down because of a penetration issue between the tendon and this phase right here on the first link. By introducing a virtual topology, I've managed to make the mesh on that problematic area a lot better 
solving the problem of the penetration between the two contacts. And finally, I need to specify how my model is going to interact with the rest of the world. And I do that by defining the boundary conditions. In this case, I want the metacarpal to be fixed and I'm going to pull the tendon away from the finger. Now, because the finger is going to flex and the tendon is going to move a considerable amount and is going to twist and move away from the finger, I need to turn the large deformations on. This will tell ANSYS that the XYZ coordinates of every node in the simulation are going to change in every sub-step. So essentially, ANSYS will recreate the stiffness matrix for every single position of the elements in the simulation. And to help with the solution, I'm going to turn the sub-steps on and I'm going to try this combination for now. Finally, in the solution section, I have introduced an item of total deformation as one of my possible results to analyze. But you can introduce any other quantity that you might be interested in, like the, the stresses, the vomisa stresses, the maximum principal stresses, the strains, the reaction forces in the fixed supports and so on. I let it run in, in this case with this computer, it took about five minutes with 44 seconds and this is this is the total deformation. I'm gonna see how it looks. Now this is the FEA of the first finger prototype for my LAT robotic hand. Now back then I was interested in knowing whether the mechanism was going to hold the load. Now in this design, rather than using a tendon or a cable, I used a mechanism of bars to actuate the finger. I follow the same procedure as the one I just show you by defining first of all the, the materials I'm going to use and then I defined the contact elements there's a couple of frictionless contact elements there and a couple of bonded contact elements Then I define the boundary conditions by selecting a fixed support and a displacement in the shape of a rotation on the third link that emulates the action of a servo motor. Now in this case it took me about 3 hours and 41 minutes to get the solution done. Back then my computer wasn't as strong as the one I've got at the moment. Plus this simulation has 38, 30,000 nodes. So there's lots of equations to solve and obviously the complexity increases and the computational effort increases as well. And there's my deformation shape. I can
can introduce any quantity I, I wish to analyze. Again, Bomeiser stresses, uh, reaction forces on the fixed supports. I can check the stresses on the pins, stresses on the levers, stresses on the mechanism inside, determine the reaction forces in the fixed support. Now this is a similar FEA of a latest version of the same finger, which I have adapted for FDM 3D printing. So the tolerances are a bit more generous. Here I've got 22,000 nodes. I have defined uh, some fancy materials like TPU for the tip of the finger. And uh, for the boundary conditions, I have applied a remote displacement on the axis of the third link so that it only rotates around the axis. It can't move in XYZ but it rotates in around that axis. I have also created a fixed support on the pin that is attached to one of the levers of the mechanism in blue color, as you can see there. And as an input to my mechanism, I have created a displacement that I have applied in that region there, which emulates the connection of a cable. Once again, the large deformations are on, and I got my sub steps on with that configuration. In this case, because I had access to a better computer than uh, in the previous year, it only took me 14 minutes to get the simulation done. And this is uh, the deformation shape of the finger. Now, this is a more complex FEA where I've introduced a second finger, the thumb, and an object that is supported by a sheet that emulates the floor. The procedure has been the same as the one I've just described, but in this case, I have introduced new contact elements between the fingers and the object. Now the key for this simulation to successfully run relies on the definition of those contact elements. Now I've noticed that by turning the predict for impact option on the contact elements between the fingers and the object, ANSYS was able to trace closely the point where the fingers start to touch the object and therefore was able to converge to the stage that you've seen on screen. This FEA took about 2 hours and 30 minutes to run. This is an extremely difficult and tricky simulation to run and it requires lots of patience lots of fiddling around with the contact elements, with the soup steps, with the mesh for, for the model to run. Well, that was it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for your university assignments. Now, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. Please hit the subscribe button at the bottom of the video. Take good care of yourselves and stay safe.